Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna look into how to make and use custom fences in Planet 2. Of course we already have the in-game fences, but sometimes it can be nice to just make your own in order to help bring some personality and just life to your designs. So the video is split into three parts and for the first one we're going to focus on the tall and short fences you see on screen here and how to make those kind of designs. Then for part two we'll demonstrate how to place, integrate and use them as a natural barrier around your habitats. And then finally for part three I'll go over the different fences I've made here so that you can hopefully get some inspiration as to what pieces can be useful when you first want to start getting creative with your fences. So let's just get started with part one and talk about how I've made these two fences right here. Before you start making your fence you need to figure out what your fence is going to be used for. Like is it purely decorative or does it have to be functional? Because when you look at this part of the fence you can see it's lower and because of that some animals might be able to jump over it so what you could do is for instance go to the cypedia and this is mainly for if you're using the fence for a habitat because if you're just using it to decorate then you don't have to worry about any of this you can just make whatever you feel looks good but if you want it to be functional and keep the animals in there are a few things you need to keep in mind so let's say we're making a habitat for the leopard here and then we go to natural habitat, you can see in order to keep in a leopard, you need a fence that's at least three meters tall. And I'm pretty sure that this fence would not keep a leopard in. So if you were to make a fence for an animal like that, you would probably be better off focusing on something like this. And so what I've done here is I've made this wall and then you can see the glass here is not getting picked up because this is actually a barrier. So that means if I were to duplicate this, you would not get the glass. And I mean there are glass options in the construction menu, but for something like this I feel like it's better to use the barriers because with the construction pieces the glass panels aren't really big enough to cover an area like this, so that means you have to overlap them a lot and it just doesn't turn out too pretty in my opinion, so therefore I just went with the glass barrier. So I think we're just gonna jump straight into how you achieve something like this. So what I like to start with when making a tall wall like that is to choose a one meter wall panel. So we're doing the temple one for this. And then depending on what theme pieces you're going with, you'll usually get the option between this arch and then maybe you get some uh, window panels or a more rounded arch. And those are all great options. We're gonna go with the square arch for this. And this would be exactly the same process if you chose to use, for instance, the stone pieces here. Like we have the one meter wall here and then I would just place an arch on top like that. And then of course you just choose if you want to focus on mainly one wall piece at a time or if you want to duplicate it so that you can decorate a larger area at once. But I would always suggest making two versions of this so that you get some variation. Like maybe you don't want the window pieces to be there the whole way so then I would just choose this wall piece and then do that and then decorate it as a whole. So I'm thinking we could do that now and then as you can see here I've used these beams to kind of define the area and add some detail so if you just search up beam in the construction menu here you get all of these wonderful options and it's really just up to you what kind of pieces you prefer and what fits with your theme. So, so for me I'm just gonna go with this uh, with this uh, slat cladding beam is that how you say it I'm, I'm gonna go with that because that's what I uh, did here and I kind of like how it looks so I choose that and then you just want to place that all the way around and I would suggest having the angle snap on here so that it's a little bit easier to rotate it and make sure it lands in the right position like that so now we have this nice frame going for us which just adds some nice details so then i'm just gonna duplicate this over because you don't really want to forget the back side and what you need to make sure is that you're always building in one group some of these have not registered in this group so then we just drag all over this and then merge scenery into group so then we are sure that everything is the same group and it will be super easy to duplicate it later on and sometimes it could be easier to just make the one window first so that you have more freedom if you're planning to place it along a lot of curves or something. So then on the top here you see we also have this climb proofing and while it's not necessarily a functional piece in the game it makes it look a lot more realistic because uh, this whole piece would probably be enough to keep in most animals so it's not needed but it adds some nice details. So then here you can see I just used the slat cladding beams again and I would actually really recommend these pieces because you have a good variety of length and thickness thickness so you have the thick pieces here that are one meter two meters and four meters and then you have the thin pieces as well and then you can also recolor them which is a really nice tool so it gives you a lot of freedom
done with those pieces. So we're gonna take that and then just place it down here. And then you just wanna make sure that you turn it into a decent angle like that. And then you just space them out evenly like I'm doing here. So for this, I'm just using these round beams. Uh, I'm using the thin versions, two meter. Actually, we're gonna do four meter. And for this one, you might have to turn off angle snap just because it doesn't always align properly. So then you just space them out as evenly as you can until you're happy with the result. And then it's super easy to just duplicate this over using Control X, just like that. And then you can just select all of these and make them any color you want. Then for decoration, I find that the ivy pieces work really well and you can go with this kind. And then there's also this ivy that's a bit greener and just and a bit different. So we're gonna stick with this one for now. I feel like you don't really need to see me place down all of these. So I'm just gonna copy and paste them over so that things are moving along a bit quicker. So like that and then of course you can always go in and make adjustments as you feel like. So for me right now I just feel like I want these ones to be a bit more tilted. So I'm just gonna give them a bit more of an angle and then just put them back in place. And then we're gonna move over to this lower fence and for this one I chose to go with the uh, dry stone wall top here. This is also just another one meter piece so it really doesn't, uh, doesn't matter what you choose. I just feel like uh, sometimes it can help to get some different textures so that's why we're not only sticking with the temple pieces here so then for the top here i've just used these slat cladding panels and i feel like a lot of them work really well for stuff like this and there are a lot of variations here in terms of uh, length and height and there's this curvy look over here so you can really just play around with these pieces if you like them but for this we're just gonna go with the four meter piece because it fits perfectly to this one and then if you wanted it to be lower then you could just sink it in and just push it back a bit and then you would only see the top here so like that so you could just search up beam and just play around with the different options i'm just gonna stick with this one that i chose last time Then we're just adding these pieces for decoration. You can just search up decoration or top, uh, stuff like that, and you'll get some different options. This is called the Tropical Sculpture Topper. And I think we're also gonna recolor these like that so it just blends in a bit more nicely these uh, slat pieces can also be recolored so keep that in mind if you want to use those and then we're just going to go through the same process again with copying these ivies over so then I have this area and I need a fence to keep the animals in. So we're gonna see how we're gonna go about placing down these fences here. This is quite a large piece. So for something like this, you might want to enter the group mode and then just kind of duplicate the correct pieces. We could just drag it over like that and then split it from the group so that you have multiple pieces that are a bit easier to work with. And then it's really just all about lining them up so that it looks pretty and you feel like it works. And this is sort of why I said that you should always make two different pieces because if I only made the glass window pieces then it wouldn't really make sense to have them at the end here because the guests can't really walk up the mountain here and peek through so it just makes more sense to have a wall here instead. Then we can start implementing our shorter fence so let's just see if we can get this down here. So for connecting fences like this you could either just stick it inside here and that looks quite all right or you could find these triangular shaped uh, pieces that works quite well to connect things like this. Like that and then just place it that way instead and then remove the top piece there so that it's not poking out. So that works fine as well but I really don't mind uh, the straight edge here so I'm just gonna stick with that for now. And then when connecting these just delete any uh, items that are sort of poking out. And then to cover up edges like this, you could just tweak the fence to make it fit or you could just then trees and rocks and stuff like that can uh, work really nicely to just make a smooth transition. And the same goes for over here. Let's just take this tree, I'm gonna make this sort of a bush area here like that. And then I'm actually just gonna use the triangular pieces after all. 
changed my mind here. <laughs> and then if you use the same method as me here, then don't forget to go to the barrier section over here and then either go with the glass barrier, the one-way glass or the thick glass. So for me here, I'm not able to place down the glass barrier because I have my path here. So just make sure your path is not in the way. Don't be stupid like me. And then we can easily make it into glass and just try to get it to line up properly. And then just drag it all the way to the top like that. And then you get this very seamless glass viewing area. So then you just place these sort of beams. I don't know what they're called, but yeah, you just place these inside the wall so that you can't see them like that. So now we have this very seamless uh, glass viewing area and I think it works really nicely. So then I'm just gonna take my path and reconnect it. So that's kind of how you make these kind of fences. So what's important to note if you're making fences for a habitat like this is that some of the construction pieces are actually climbable. So what you want to make sure is that you click the group you've created and then you see climbing is enabled here, which means the animals can climb over it and then escape. So therefore we're just going to turn it off and then it's disabled. And if you've already placed down a bunch of stuff like I have here, then you can just drag it over the entire area and then you can see climbing is partially enabled. So then we're just going to turn it to disabled. And then if you have some pieces in your habitat already that are supposed to be climbable then you just have to select those and then enable it. So I thought I would just quickly take you over a bit of what I've done here so that you can take a look at some of my favorite pieces, what I would recommend using and just kind of dissect what I've done here. So for this one I've actually used the in-game fences. These are the Indonesian stained uh, timber fences. So I used these as sort of a base and then I took these New World lattice panels and built it upwards so that we get these kind of tall nice fence. Now for the support beams here I've just used the standard Planet 2 uh, thick plank pieces. They're also painted so that means you can recolor them. That's the East Asia unpainted timber so you cannot recolor this but I think the color is beautiful as it is really and it works with so many different things. And then of course I just love decorating with the ivies. So I would absolutely suggest just playing around with that and if something looks boring just throw a bunch of ivies on there and problem solved. And then we have this one that's sort of a different but it's very basic very simple. I've just used the twilight door planks and recolored them. So this piece is also a great option for just being able to be creative and uh, use a bunch of colors. For the beam inside here we have the Indonesian stained timber planks which also work great. And then I just want to show you that we have all of these different panels that are already nicely decorated. So I would suggest playing around with these as well. There are many beautiful options. And they just work so well to just add some color and, and get some life into your designs. And then if you just search up column, we have so many different options that are also just really versatile and pretty. Just sink some of them into the ground and see if you like how it looks like. You can also recolor a lot of these, which just gives them a whole new look and really lets you be creative like that. Like I think this looks really cool actually. So then here we just have this very basic fans but I still kind of like it. It's very simple and just minimalistic so I, I kind of like that as well. Here I also just started with the one meter plank. I sunk it into the ground so we can make it a bit shorter and then there are just these modern glass wall panels. And then I added the twilight door planks and some details to support it and then the wooden plank wall. And here again I've just played around with uh, some of these tall log pieces which also work really nicely just as the beams here. The modern glass wall panels and then we have the slat cladding beam as I'm sure you've already noticed I'm a big fan of and then under here the African decorative strip which is also pretty cool. I'm just gonna drag it forward so you can see. This also has this great texture and kind of interesting shape that I would highly suggest playing around with. And then here, this is also one of my favorites. So I used the Indonesian stained uh, timber beams here. These are also recolorable. Then on top here, just for some different texture, I had the wood beam thin painted. And then just this uh, Indonesian timber pole on the side here and topped it with this timber pole cap. I, I think it turned out really nicely and I might save this for later and use it in one of our other Sue episodes. 
clothes. This is also made up of a pretty interesting piece. It's this uh, African wall decorative trim and it usually looks like this but placing them on top of each other here I thought it kind of made a nice fence. And then the Indonesian lantern pole for the sides here. Also recolorable so just do whatever you want with it. Then here just a simple one made with how do you say that? Twilight portcullis wooden beam. Yes okay. And then the Indonesian stained timber plank again so you can kind of see what pieces I prefer to use when making these kind of fences. So I think that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you got something useful out of this. If you enjoyed the video please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. I post tutorials every Tuesday and gameplay every Friday. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!